The Constitution of the United States did not originally guarantee women the right to vote. This matter was left up to the individual states to decide, and by the turn of the 20th century, only a handful of states had granted women suffrage. In the decades leading up to the 1910s, the suffrage movement was dominated by a group called the National American Women's Suffrage Association, more commonly referred to as NASA, which favored a conservative approach of working to change voting laws on a state-by-state -state basis. By the 1910s, there was a growing division within NASA, mostly from the younger generation of suffragists who were frustrated with NASA's conservative approach and favored pressing for an amendment to the Constitution, which would have made women's suffrage laws federal law. Leading the charge was Alice Paul and Lucy Burns. Paul and Burns split from NASA in 1916 and formed the National Woman's Party, or NWP. The NWP favored more aggressive tactics than their predecessors, such as parades and pickets. They became the first group to picket the White House in protest of President Woodrow Wilson's refusal to support passage of a women's suffrage amendment. Wilson was a Democrat, and at that time, the Democratic Party dominated the South, and white Southern voters were largely against the idea of women's suffrage. Wilson was worried that he might alienate his voting base by supporting the cause, which he privately supported. The NWP's protests continued even after the United States joined the Allied war effort in World War I, a move that some people criticized as unpatriotic. Yet Alice Paul felt strongly that it was hypocritical of the country to fight for democracy around the world when it did not offer political equality to half of its adult citizens. When the NWP's protests eventually became a political embarrassment to President Wilson, his advisors urged local officials to find a way in which to remove them. The protesters were arrested for obstructing traffic, even though they were protesting on public property. They were subsequently sent to prison where they were denied the right to see their attorneys, they were subjected to violent treatment by prison guards, and not given proper medical attention. Paul and Burns launched a hunger strike in protest of their harsh treatment and in response were violently force-fed by prison officials. Eventually, public opinion turned sympathetic to the women's cause. President Wilson reversed his course and endorsed the suffrage amendment, which officially became law after ratification by three-fourths of the states in August of 1920. Among the numerous real-life historical figures depicted in the movie is Ida B. Wells. This scene with her is brief, but historically important. Wells was an African-American journalist and civil rights activist who was appalled by the marginalization of women of color within the suffrage movement. Just as President Wilson was afraid of alienating socially conservative white Southern voters, Alice Paul was at first reluctant to include African-American women in public marches and parades for the same reason. Ida B. Wells took Paul to task for this omission, criticizing her for essentially selling out women of color, all in the name of political expediency. In the film, Wells remarks that she expected more from a Quaker, which is a reference to the centuries-old Quaker faith's foundational belief in complete racial and gender equality. The film was produced by HBO in 2004 and directed by German filmmaker Katja von Garnier. This is notable in that although women have made significant strides in movie making in the past decade, film direction is still largely a male-dominated field. Most of the main characters are based on real people, with a couple of major exceptions. The character of Emily Layton, the meek and passive senator's wife who eventually becomes a suffragette. She is fictional. The same applies to Ben Weissman, the political cartoonist who becomes a love interest for Alice. In reality, Alice Paul's romantic life is shrouded in mystery and ambiguity. As some famous historians adamantly believe that she was a lesbian, a theory that this movie obviously does not buy into. So why did the screenwriters include a romantic interest at all, given what little we know about Abbas Paul's private life? Along these lines, I would ask you to contemplate the movie's stance on feminism in general. There are several conversations in the movie regarding the difficult balance between career and family. At one point, Alice says to Lucy, when you're alone, you can make any choice you want, but when someone loves you, you lose that right. I won't give anything away until we have it all. Do you agree or disagree with this bit of dialogue? Is the movie making a statement that, contrary to modern feminism, a woman can't have it all? Or is it simply saying that Alice Paul made a conscious choice to sacrifice her personal life for the cause of suffrage and equal rights? This movie also uses contemporary pop music and dialogue in an attempt to make it more relevant to modern audiences. Now, the extent to which this, along with the utilization of fictional characters, is a successful technique is something you should think about as you watch the film and participate in the discussion board.